All right guys, it's the next day. And uh, thanks to some YouTube, I have some uh, revitalized confidence here. I think what's happening, it, it is the rockers. Uh, and it seems like they make noise when they're too loose. So that's a good thing, because we can fix that. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna pull the valve covers off, and I'm going to try to reset it, like I saw in uh, Rookie End Wrench uh, channel. So thanks for putting that video together. Saw a couple of them, but that was the one that uh, really made it clear on uh, how to try to get that dialed in. So we're gonna try to use that method. Um, I'm gonna get the shop ready, and uh, we'll get to that. All right, we might get this yet. Let's see. We're all, we're close. We're close. I don't think that's it. I didn't hear any difference there at all. When it was totally loose versus when it was uh, tightened back up, I heard no difference. So I don't know if I <laughs> messed these two up or not or if that was even the problem because it sounds like it may not be coming from the valves after all. Uh, but it's definitely rotational. Something's very bap 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 bap. Huh. All right. Shoot. All right, quick update. I uh, pulled the valve covers and uh, started making some adjustments and <laughs> I went back to the book and I did it exactly the way the book uh, asked me to and uh, when I started up had a real hard time starting so I was like huh I went back and I pulled a half turn out of every single one after doing what the book said to the letter and started running actually a lot better and let's start it up real quick the set, it's been a little while, right? It's been probably like an hour or so. So I think it sounds better. So I won't know. I don't think I hear that clang anymore, but let's check it out. I think the uh, the valves are in a better spot, so I think we could cross that off the list, and I think that it definitely makes less noise. I still think there's something there, but I'm gonna put the valve covers back on, and then uh, we'll see if that makes any difference, and uh, go from there, all right. Hey team, Patrick here. <laughs> Updates. Got the valve covers back on, and while I was doing it, I wanna show you something that I noticed here. Looks like I'm getting some weeping. <sighs> yep, that's oil. That's a bummer. That could be the uh, front main seal, I guess. I don't know. But uh, trying to remember here. I wasn't trying to go for 100% no leaks. I was going for 
less leaks, right? <laughs> so let's see how we see what we got going on here. All right, after all that, I had to top it back off again. I think we're good. I'm gonna start it back up. We'll see how it sounds. And uh, I think I'll actually let it warm up this time. So let's, uh, let's see how it goes. You gotta turn the key on. That helps. All right, quick update. Uh, it ran great while it was cold, but as it started to warm up, <laughs> it uh, didn't run as well. And then it slowly, uh, the idle started to drop down slower, slower, slower until it stalled. Uh, and I'm noticing here that my chokes may not be set cor correctly or one of them may not be working right, because uh, take a look. This one here, is still kind of closed and uh, it actually will stick see a little bit something there or this one is wide open right now like if I try to close it it opens itself so I forget which one of these I replaced I replaced one of these and uh, so one of them might be actually right and one of them might be wrong <laughs> So I need to take a look and figure out which one I actually replaced because that is the one that's probably working, but then adjust it properly. But to do that, I think I need to let everything cool down and adjust back to its final resting spot. And then, uh, and then maybe we could try it again. Not a total win. I mean, it does run and start. I think that noise is it, it sounded to me more and more like a, a Corvair, <laughs> but then again, maybe I'm just getting used to it. I don't know. Uh, if you have any thoughts, uh, comments, please, uh, you know, put them in there and uh, I'll check it out. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I didn't do anything with these carbs at all except um, replace that choke. So uh, I'm hoping uh, we'll be able to get that worked out. But. Uh Okay, updates, here's my current status. So, I felt like it's just not warm, right? It's just, it's cold and uh, chokes aren't hooked up. So I was like, you know, maybe, and the book doesn't call to hook up the chokes yet. That's later in the process. So technically this is supposed to work without them. Um, but that said, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the chokes and I went ahead and, and hooked those up and I actually did it the way the, the book wants it done. So at least they're close, a lot closer than they were. They're at least showing the same gap at this point. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to get it started again. And I'm just really trying to get it. I think if it's able to start, run and warm up, then I can disconnect the chokes and we can continue um, with the process. But. It's gotta run first, and it's not running. So, let's try it. Chokes are now hooked up. Let's see if that makes any difference. All right, test one, chokes are hooked up. Well, that was better. That was better. Um. Maybe a little throttle. Uh, 
still not uh, still not happy with that what's going on here why am I getting poofs of stuff Okay. Make any sense all right but giving it a little throttle seemed to work there maybe I'll up the idle temporarily so that I don't have to have my hand on it let's see if we can get the same response running and what I had done is uh, I went ahead and put this turnbuckle on because I was going to use it for a later step anyway but let me show you and what that's doing is just adjusting the idle right so I turned it until I could get it running and once it was running I was able to set the timing or at least look and see how fast it was running and it was about between five and six hundred rpm and that's with this turnbuckle set like that now at five or 600 RPM with that, when I look at this original uh, idle screw down here, I now have a gap. So I think that my initial, uh, you know, connection down here is wrong. And so of course, if the very first step is wrong, it's gonna throw everything else off. So I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not, but I have a gap there now so now I'm gonna adjust my idle screw with the paper on this side, and then I'm gonna start the process over again, and I'm going to go from there and then fix everything else and see if we can uh, have any difference. All right, let's try it. <laughs> oh my gosh, so <laughs> I just decided to start over and go all the way and I redid everything, including the first step where I wasn't getting gap. I disconnected everything and just let this bar go ahead and hit the carburetor until I got gap. And I got gap. And so I set it with a slight drag, got everything dialed in. Same results. <laughs> and so I started rereading the book and guess what I found? I missed a whole section. I mean, I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but 
I turned the page and started looking at instrument checkout, but I didn't do step 10 or step 11 before uh, trying to start this thing. And this is gonna, I think is gonna make a difference. So let's go ahead and do step 10 and 11, right? Let's do, we're trying to do all the steps. So step 10 is remove accelerator pullback spring from the cross shaft lever. Hold the cross shaft lever in full throttle position and then pull the, uh, what are they calling it here? The accelerator control rod rearward, so toward me. So we're gonna pull the accelerator in full throttle. We're gonna pull the ex uh, accelerator rod to meet it and we're gonna connect it. That's what we're gonna do. That's it. We're gonna call it right there. And then uh, put the spring back. Okay, that's done. Next up, it says uh, idle mixture screws. So it says turn the idle mixture screws on both carbs uh, lightly to its seat and then back out one and a half turns. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, now we're gonna back out half, one, one and a half. Same on the other side. Okay, we are back to trying to uh, double check timing. Let's see if it'll start and run this time. go you want to go hmm ah I feel like we're getting the same results and now we've messed with everything <laughs> dang it It goes wide open on this side, and this side is still uh, managing choke, so this one's not ready to be wide open, and this one's wide open, so it just throws everything off. So, I gotta figure out how to get this thing dialed in. So, I'm gonna mess with this a little bit, because one of these is brand new, and I think that's my problem, ultimately, is I only replaced one and that was probably uh, a mistake. I probably should have replaced them both so at least they would act in the same way. So, all right, I'm gonna try and mess with this a little bit more and see if I can't get this to actually run. Hey team, updates. I mean, I think, I feel like, like this just totally went off the rails. <laughs> I've been messing with this thing for a while now and not making any progress. And uh, let's stick to the facts here. The facts are is that after making the initial adjustments and getting the timing set to, it's now at 14 degrees at this point, 
um, when I start it, it will start and run at a five or 600 RPM idle if I manage this choke, right? If the chokes are hooked up and I manage this choke, I can, uh, I can get it to run. However, so I've got, I've got a choke issue for sure because these two are not going at the same time. They're, they're, they're doing different things. Second issue is, okay, that's fine. The book isn't even calling for choke at this point. It's just calling to have the choke actually disconnected and it's expecting it to run. It literally says, seat the idle, or the, the idle mixture screws lightly in its seat and back out one and a half turns. Now, when I put it in there, these were not one and a half turns out. There was definitely some discrepancies between that, you know, uh, they were, they were definitely different lengths. So there's some, I know right now that they're pulled out one and a half turns, but that doesn't seem to be enough uh, to keep it running without the choke. Now, if I force it, like, since I can't control the choke all the time, I just disconnected it and I can get it to run at about 11 to 1200 RPM. If I just hold it at that level, I can do it. I attempted to move on to other steps, but I can't get this turnbuckle. It's too tricky with one with only two hands, right? To uh, start it, get it going at 1200, and then adjust something to keep it at 1200. I haven't been able to do it yet, so. But still, that's not gonna do us really any good. So it says timing. I feel like we got through timing. And then it says accelerate to 11 to 1200 PM and hold steady. So that's what I was trying to do. I was like, okay, we'll just skip that step that, you know, let's just pretend that it's idling for whatever reason. Uh, let's try to figure out what we can do next. And the other thing is checking the vacuum. And when I do that, I'm only getting five. Now, when I was doing it from the ports from the back, I was getting 15, easy. And when I'm doing it here and I'm holding it at 1100 RPM, I'm getting five, but it's, it's not steady. It's like all over the place. I don't know what that means. So that's an issue. So I feel like I can't actually even do the pinch test on both sides, which would be the next step. So, Let's just pretend that that was good. The next step would be setting the idle mixture screws. And maybe that's where I should move on to next. Or at least give it a shot. But I can't because it should be done at idle. And now the car is warm. And I tried to hook up the uh, uh, chokes again and they're, they're just open by themselves because now the car is warm. So, I'm stuck. I really feel like I should be setting that uh, fuel air mixture screw, uh, screw at idle. So I'm stuck. I don't know, I'll have to think about it, but this might be the end of the episode <laughs> because I've been messing with this for a long time and I don't know if any of the stuff I did is gonna help anybody because it's sure not helping me right now. But uh, have any thoughts, uh, please let me know like comment subscribe and stay tuned because you know this thing's got to move eventually we got other projects so the only good news is so far is you know when it's at 1100 rpm it sounds really good uh and even when i'm controlling the carb it sounds really good so it's uh, really a matter of um getting this fuel air and everything uh, dialed back in which man last weekend started right up it was good so maybe i shouldn't have messed with any of this stuff i don't even know but uh well i do know because now i messed it up but alas this too shall pass and we'll get it figured out thank you all for watching and uh <laughs> we'll catch you next time bye